In the first part of this lesson, I talked a lot about protein structure and the levels of protein structure. So now let's discuss why protein structure is important. And in the example you have shown in this picture, in pink, there is a hormone molecule which is bound to a receptor protein. So the way your cells perceive hormones is that these receptors have to bind to them to carry out a certain signal. So the shape of the hormone and the shape of the receptor have to match exactly, just the way a lock uh, has to fit a certain key. So if the hormone does not fit this little groove in the receptor, then the cell will not be able to recognize it. Well, here's another example of protein structure and function. And this deals with the protein hemoglobin, which is found in your red blood cells, and it transports oxygen throughout your body. Hemoglobin is an example of a protein that has quaternary structure. It is made up of more than one polypeptide. In this case, it is actually made up of four polypeptides. One, two, three, four. Now you will learn out more about hemoglobin later in the year, so this is just a little introduction to its structure. So it has four polypeptide chains, and each one of them has this other molecule in it that is called the heme group. You don't need to know a lot about the heme group at this point. I just want to point out that it has the central iron, and the iron is what binds the oxygen. Now, hemoglobin is made up of um, hundreds of amino acids. And here's just a segment of some of the amino acids. So here you have a sequence of just a small portion of the amino acids that make up hemoglobin. And on this side, we have the normal sequence. And then on the right side is the abnormal or the mutant sequence of a particular mutation that can happen in hemoglobin where just one amino acid is changed. Now you might wonder, if hemoglobin has hundreds of amino acids, how does changing one make a difference? Well, it does. Each amino acid has a different variable group. And this variable group affects how the protein folds, whether that amino acid is able to form hydrogen bonds or uh, van der Waals interactions or ionic bonds with other amino acids. So changing just one can disrupt the shape. And the shape of the protein can disrupt how it functions. The abnormal hemoglobin actually clumps together to form these rods that even disrupt the shape of the red blood cells. So here in this picture, this is a normal red blood cell, and this is a red blood cell that has the abnormal hemoglobin. It is called sickle cell because sometimes it's not as obvious in this picture, but sometimes it can actually bend to form this sickle shape. So a person that has this has something called sickle cell anemia. In this disease, the abnormal hemoglobin cannot transport oxygen properly. So the person is not getting oxygen to their cells and that can actually cause death. So just changing one amino acid can cause something as drastic as death. So I hope you have a better appreciation for the structure of proteins now. So lastly, let's just summarize some of the functions that proteins carry out inside cells. Some proteins function in structure. So for example, you have a protein called keratin that makes up your skin and your nails. It gives them their structure. Other proteins function in transport. So you just had the example of hemoglobin, which transports oxygen throughout your body. There's also proteins that transport molecules in and out of cells, such as um, there's a particular protein that transports uh, glucose into your cells so your cells can use it for energy. Other proteins function in receiving and sending signals. So receptor proteins um, receive signals and then they'll pass them on to other proteins which will send the signal. Proteins can also function in movement. So you have some proteins that can move chromosomes during cell division. Other proteins will um, move vesicles throughout your cells. And even your muscles, for your muscles to be able to move, you have certain proteins that have the ability to contract to move your muscles. 
then some proteins function to defend you against diseases. So antibodies, which you might have heard of already, these are proteins that will fight viruses and bacteria that invade your body. And lastly, some proteins function to catalyze or speed up biochemical reactions. And these proteins are called enzymes. So enzymes speed up biochemical reactions inside living cells. Without them, the reactions would not happen fast enough for you to even stay alive. So you'll learn a lot more about all of these different types of functions throughout the year. So now let's just summarize what you learned about today. First, you learn about the structure of amino acids and how amino acids are linked together through peptide bonds. Then I told you about how proteins fold and the four levels of protein structure. And then you learn about how they unfold through denaturation. Lastly, we talked about the relationship between protein structure and function and the different functions of proteins. So I'll see you next time.